Hello, English speaker, speaking people from any world that you are in the world. Uh, we are reading the saga of the Incas, or uh, how they lost their empire. Uh, last uh, Saturday, or yesterday, we read episode 32. Today we're going to read episode 33. We'll, we're now in the part in which... Uh, the people or the Spaniards are already planning how to kill Atahualpa and also how to divide the money that's coming for his rescue. Uh, it's a situation very difficult because the Spaniards, they're getting the goal, but for sure they don't, they don't want Atahualpa to be alive because he's a very dangerous man with all the troops around the Inca Empire. So there is a lot of discussions or dialogue among the Inca and, his, uh, and the Spaniards who want to the goal and also want to kill him. So I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Soldiers, I hear you. I will make good on my promise. Francisco, not all the gold that is coming is for. Atahualpa's freedom, some is to save Huascar's life and that cannot be counted as part of the ransom. As the treasurer of the crown, I have to keep track of what is Atahualpa's and what is his brother's. Almagro's men should receive part of Huascar's treasure. Requelme, we will melt all the gold and silver objects that so far have been collected. As a man of finances, I will let you divide what belongs to the king and our part. I don't want any man who soiled his pants to be discontented with his share. With the frigid air of the Andes warmed by the exhaled breath of the natives, they begun to heat the clay furnaces. Melting the thousands of exquisitely crafted objects, sparing a few fine pieces of art for the delight of Carlos V. Hernando. Take the royal fifth to the king, and honor our family name with the treasure. You will receive what is due to you. I have kept my promise that I would make you rich. His brother left to Spain. The distribution among the troops would be the greatest feast of greed in the history of mankind. Their days were spent fighting among themselves for any minute piece of gold that could be acquired. The disbursement was according to the possession of a horse or any instrument of war that expeditiously caused the death of a greater number of Indians. The chroniclers and historians mingle the different units of weights and currency used in those days, arobas, quintals, marcos, ducados, which have no meaning in our present. Perhaps a way to describe the ransom is to compare it to the gold kept in the United States at Fort Knox, or obtain all that amount in the mines that are still been mined 500 years later causing the death of millions of natives. So much gold was coming that it was impossible to keep accurate records, because the Spaniards would steal or conceal the metal. All the riches taken to Europe filled the gutters of their avariciousness, making it possible to begin their industrial revolution. What did we, natives of the New World, get in return? The degradation of our race, and the humiliating name of Indian. If that is not a holocaust, then what is? That is why humanity has to restore what we lost in our souls and not the gold that has been ingested, digested, and all that Indians are getting is the yellow shit of their greed. Let the old world keep what they took from our continent, and mankind give us back our dignity, which weighs more than the fucking fortune stolen from us. So much gold and silver was distributed that even the ones who received the smallest share were rich enough to lend money to the crown. Almagro and his men received nothing, and if they did it was only to pay their expenses for what they brought to continue with the conquest. Of personal interest, Cieza tells us that of the 86 cavalry men, one of them was Hernán Sánchez, and of the 160 men on foot, Bartolomé Sánchez, Lázaro Sánchez, Juan Sánchez, Alonso Sánchez, and Miguel Sánchez. The most numerous with that surname. Perhaps one of them was part of my mestizage, and I cannot deny that side of my heritage. 
I just want my ancestors of the old world to know that life is also about fighting for lost causes, and I am advocating for my Indian heritage that has been dispossessed. But all those Sanchezes were also fighting for a cause and, whether good or bad, in the end we all fight for something that we believe. In my heart there is no ill feelings toward them, we are all faulty humans. Capito. Atahualpa is furious. Only you can calm his anger. Atahualpa, what happened? Apu Machu. You have to kill that miserable fellow pillow. Why? He is the best translator I have. I don't care. He has been fornicating with Inti Pala, my favorite concubine. We have been doing the same thing with your women. I cannot kill him for similar crimes that we are committing. With you it is different. Felipillo is a servant. Atahualpa's ire was appeased, now the Spaniards had an ally who would perpetrate one of the most unspeakable acts of betrayal. Francisco would use to his advantage the adversarial situation of the man who could distort the translated word against an all-powerful lord in chains, because Pizarro had not the least intention of fulfilling his part of the contract. The contest between Atahualpa and Felipillo would be for a woman, and the Inca versus Francisco for his freedom. Atahualpa, why are you so worried tonight? Oh, why Ricocha Soto? My chess adversary, look at that bright star with a long tail. It tells me that my end is near. Nonsense. That is a comet, it doesn't bring any bad augurs. Yes, it does. My father died soon after that event took place in the skies. Now, I see that same omen is going to happen to me. You are the only protector I have. Hernando is gone to the old world, and he will never return. Although he was cruel to my people, he looked after me, perhaps, for his own self-interests. Atahualpa, your life and the future of the empire are in your hands. Tell us if it is true that your generals are uprising. You are a man of war, and that is why you are being kept in prison. Wairacocha Soto, my loyal generals are probably planning to rescue me. But some are also conniving against me. Chalco Chima will tell you the truth. I hope he does, or he will die. Sapa Inca. Why are you so despondent for the death of your brother? You should be happy that soon you will be released, and we can retake the empire. All we need is your command. Chalco Chima, you must never divulge that I ordered Waskar's execution. If you do, they will kill me. General Chalco Chima. We know that you are having secret talks with Atahualpa, and you are planning a revolt. Tell me the truth or I will burn you alive. Wairacocha Soto, the Inca has been faithful to his contract. There are no plans to attack you. Indian dog. You are not telling me the truth. Only the slow fire of our justice will make you talk. In the center of the plaza, the general was placed at the stake. As the flames began to burn his feet, Chalco Chima gazed at Atahualpa's fierce eyes that were commanding him to die like a warrior and reveal nothing of what he knew. Stop the fire. Do not let Atahualpa stare at me that his fiery eyes burn more than the flames. I will talk. Soto extinguished the fire with his boots. The general regained his composure. And he began to talk. This time looking straight at the eyes of Atahualpa to whom he never dared to do so. Yes. Atahualpa gave me orders to kill his brother. He is also resentful, because I didn't start the uprising. That is why he wants me to die. The Spaniards heard all that they needed to know to execute Atahualpa. Pizarro felt the same. Francisco, we cannot blame Atahualpa for trying to regain his freedom. He has fulfilled most of his pact. It is time that you let him free. I don't think there is any uprising. Felipillo is implicating him to take his preferred concubine, Chalco Chima, to save his life, and Almagro to move on with the conquest. 
Huascar, the twelfth Inca, the one who led the empire to its destruction 417. Soto. Atahualpa is an astute warrior, and a dangerous one to keep alive. With Huascar we could have had two factions as enemies, and easy to subjugate them. To let the Inca free at the command of an army is suicide. His death is what the majority wants. He has to be judged, we have no other choice. Who knows? If Atahualpa had been let free would he have made it difficult for the conquests to continue? Perhaps not, loyalties to the Spaniards had already been established from his own ranks. Soto. You must be with us and decide what to do with Atahualpa. Francisco. He is a monarch. We must treat him like one, even if I kill many of his subjects. At least he would be an adversary worthy of our efforts. Otherwise, we will just be a butcher of Indians and there is no glory in that. Imagine if you send him to Spain, as equal to the king. Don't you think that his presence in the mother country will ennoble us? I will. Reason with him and get the truth from the Inca.